Hi everyone. Today we're going to look at the Click PLC timers. And currently I'm connected with my uh, PLC um, via Ethernet. And what we're going to do is add a timer to this existing program, which just has an end state, but as we can see right now, because we're online and we're currently in run mode. So what you want to do is um, you can go edit and then we can go insert and we're wrong before cursor and what we'll do is we'll use the enable uh, input to the timer as X1 which is the first input so we hit F2 then type in X1 and then we go over to the output and we'll set this for timer as soon as we hit timer we get a dialog box that pops up and we'll put the timer number as T1 and you'll notice that the check mark goes from the red to the green to indicate that everything's okay. We also can go over here to actually do the picker, the address picker, and pick the address that we'd like. Um, so the set point, we can actually have it as a actual word, or we're going to, in this case, just put in a uh, integer number um, of value 10. Our unit value will be seconds, so we're actually looking for a timer for 10 seconds. You'll notice once we put in T1, we also get the TD1, which is where our current value is going to be located. And under our uh, uh, delay setting, you can set it for an on-delay timer or an off-delay timer. And to the right-hand side here, we actually have a timing chart. You'll see that the enable is on. Um, it'll start timing, and then it'll turn the output on after that set time. In our case, 10 seconds. Um, then we have the current value option. And the current value will be retained when the timer is disabled. So if that input that we put in, that X1, is disabled, then the timer will reset. If we don't want that, we can um, we can put in here that the timer won't be reset when you disable comes on, and you need a separate reset itself. And that's what we'll do. And what it will cause is another input to that timer. So once we hit OK, you'll see our timer now pops up on the screen. And what we'll do is there's our reset. So our reset will actually take place on the next input, um, which will be X2. And now we have to join this up. So we'll call up this line. And this gives you a little helpful guide, tells you where to start, where to go. So once we have the line, then we just point where we want it to go. We'll finish there. Then we just hit escape. And now we have our line drawn. Now there's our timer. There's our timer bit that turns on after our timer has expired. And what we'll do is take this to the first output. So once again, we will uh, we can left click and we can hit insert uh, rung before cursor. And what we'll do is use the contact of the timer bit. So T1. Once again, our little check mark turns green, indicating that we have a valid address. Then our, our output side, we'll hit output, and we'll type in Y1. So that's our program. And with the click and the uh, Ethernet communication, we can actually go online and do online edits. So what we'll do now is we will uh, write this project into the PLC. It actually looks and says, well, we have no warnings and no errors. That's good. It asks us to save it. Yes, we'll do that. We'll replace the existing one. And then we have a dialog box up here. And you'll see uh, runtime edit. And we'll enable that. So we'll just say OK. And I guess another warning. We're going to proceed with the runtime edit. And then it writes the program in. So currently right now, uh, the transfer is complete. So we'll close that. And now here is our program. So we have here is our enable. It's for 10 seconds. Our current value is 0. And we have it uh, retained up here. And then after our 10 seconds, this bit will come on, which then will turn on our output. Now what you notice is that because we uh, can't, we don't have physically anything connected to that input, what we'll use is our data, uh, data view and we'll add a new data, 
data view table. We'll do that one. And this brings up a little dialog box here. And what we'll do is edit this. We will call up our address, which will be x1. And our current state is off. And because uh, it's actually a physical I.O., what we want to do is do the override. So we're going to override this bit and we're going to turn it on. And then we can write the value. And yes, we're going to write all the values. So what you'll see is that now we've had it on. It's enabled. It's now timing down. And once that gets 10, it actually turns on our output as we see turns on on our PLC. So let's just uh, turn that off. We'll write that again. And then what we'll do is we will actually uh, call up X2, which is our reset. And we're going to turn it on and write the value. And you can see it doesn't display on our screen, but it will reset it for that one scan. Now, the other thing we could do with the, uh, the timers themselves, we do have a real time clock. So if we go up to the uh, PLC calendar clock setting, you can see the time and date in the PLC and the time and date in our PC right now. And we can just hit write to P PLC and it will actually write and set our real time clock. And this is available in the, the Click PLC on some of the models. Then what we have is, um, if we look at uh, some timing bits in our, our, actually our real time clock, if we go to the address picker, and under the address picker, um, we go to the SD uh, memory area, and in it, what you'll do is come down, and you will actually see our year, our month, in our day all the way down to our second so this will uh, provide the real time clock values where we want to use them in our program okay that's it for today thanks for watching and to help us along if you could give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel thanks again and if you need any more information please visit our website at www.accautomation.com dot ca